We present social studies for standard aid pupils based on the revised syllabus. Our topic today is human origin. With me in the studio are the radio teacher and two standard aid pupils, Alpha and Bosibori. Please say hello to the pupils. Hello pupils. Welcome to the program. In our lesson today, we shall discuss one theories of human origin, two stages of human evolution from the Stone Age period, and three prehistoric sites in Eastern Africa and their location. Evolution of early human beings is the gradual process by which early humans developed to become what they are today. Three main theories have been used to explain the origin and development of human beings. Mention one theory that is used to explain the origin and development of human beings, Alpha. Mythical theory has been used to explain the origin and development of human beings. That is correct, Alpha. Mythical theory is also known as traditional theory. Throughout history, communities have tried to explain how they came into existence. This explanation is given through oral tradition, legends, and myths. Every community has its own myth about the origin of human beings. Let us listen to an Oromo person telling us about their origin. <coughs> the Oromo is said to be of two major groups that descended from two houses or wives of Oromo. These two wives were Borana and Barento. Borana was senior while Barento was junior. The two wives, Borana and Barento, formed the major Oromo clan and subclans. Therefore, the Oromo community is believed to have originated from Oromo and his two wives. That was the myth of the Oromo origin. What was the name of the two wives of Oromo, Bosibori? The two wives of Oromo were known as Borana and Barentu. Well done, Bosibori. Who of the two wives was senior and who was junior? Yes, Alpha. Borana was senior while Barentu was junior. That is correct. What is the belief of the Oromo about the origin of their clan and subclans, Bosibori? The Oromo believed that their clan and subclans originated from the two wives of Oromo, that is Borana and Barentu. Very good, Bosibori. We said earlier in the lesson that every community has its own myth about the origin of human beings. Could you tell us the story about the origin of the Kikuyu community? Yes, Alpha. The Kikuyu community believes that they originated from two people, Kikuyu, a man, and Mumbi, a woman. Gikuyu and Mumbi gave birth to nine daughters. Since there were no men to marry the daughters, Gikuyu prayed to God to give him men. God gave Gikuyu nine men who married his daughters. The nine families formed the nine clans of the Kikuyu community. The Kikuyu community believes that they originated from Gikuyu and Mumbi. Very good, Alpha. Who were the first people of the Kikuyu community, Bosibori? The first people of the Kikuyu community were a man called Gikuyu and a woman called Mumbi. Correct. Gikuyu and Mumbi gave birth to nine daughters. These nine daughters had no men to marry them. What did Gikuyu do so that his daughters could be married, Alpha? Gikuyu prayed to God to give him men. God gave him nine men who married his daughters. The nine families formed the nine clans of Kikuyu community. The Kikuyu community believes that they originated from Kikuyu and Mumbi. Well done, Alpha. What is the Kikuyu belief about their origin, Bosibori? The Kikuyu believe that they originated from Kikuyu and Mumbi. Very good. We cannot tell all the stories of origin of the communities here but I would like us to listen to a Maasai story of origin. The Maasai believed that they descended from a place called Mdongo. 
The name Mdongo, according to the Maasai, means house of God. Mdongo is a cave which the Maasai believe they came from and God gave them all the cows. Therefore, the Maasai believe that all cows belong to them. That was a story that explains where the Maasai originated from. What was the name of the place from which the Maasai descended, Bosibori? The Maasai believed that they came from a place called Mdongo, which is a cave. That is good. What does the name Mdongo mean according to the Maasai, Alpha? Mdongo, according to the Maasai, means house of God. Very good. What do the Maasai believe about cows, Bosibori? The Maasai believe that all the cows are theirs because they were given to them by God. That is correct. Since every community has a story about its origin, it is important for us to know what our community believes about its origin. Please, class teacher, ask the pupils to find out what their community believes about its origin after the lesson. We shall now talk about another theory that explains the origin of human beings. Tell us another theory that explains the origin of human beings. Yes, Alpha? Another theory that explains the origin of human beings is the creation theory. Very good, Alpha. The creation theory is sometimes called the religious theory. The creation theory is about the stories of creation that are found in the Bible and the Quran. Tell us the biblical story of creation, Bosibori. According to the Bible, all human beings were created by God. Both men and women were created by God in his own image and likeness. We read from the Bible that God is the creator of all human beings and everything on earth. The Bible tells us that the first man to be created was Adam. He was created by God from the soil. God also made the woman who was called Eve from the man's rib. According to the Bible, people believe that they originated from the man Adam and the woman Eve. Well done, Bosibori. What is the creation story according to the Quran? Alpha? According to the Quran, all human beings were created by God. He created the first man, Adam, from soil. From the rib of Adam, God created a woman whom he called Hawa. According to the Quran, people believe that they originated from the man Adam and the woman Hawa. Very good, Alpha. According to the Bible, human beings originated from a man, Adam, and a woman, Eve. While according to the Quran, human beings originated from Adam and Hawa. Which is the third theory that explains the origin of human beings, Bosibori? The third theory that explains the origin of human beings is the evolution theory. Correct, Bosibori. We said at the beginning of the lesson that evolution is the gradual process by which early human beings developed to become what we are today. An English scientist called Charles Darwin wrote in his book, the origins of species that man and animals evolved over millions of years from simple living cells to the complex animals we know today. Through evolution, human beings developed slowly after several millions of years from one form of life to another. I will now invite a resource person from the National Museums to talk about the evolution of human beings. Welcome, Mr. Opande. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mualim. I will start by talking about the first human being in the evolution who was called Homo. Excuse me, Mr. Opande. Mm -hmm. What does the word Homo mean? Well, Alpha, the word Homo means man. About two million years ago, there lived the Homo habilis. Homo habilis means man with ability. The remains of Homo habilis were discovered at Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. Excuse me, Mr. Upande, why was the Homo habilis called man with ability? 
That's a good question. Homo habilis was called man with ability because he was able to make things which he used for hunting. Homo habilis was a little skillful. The Homo habilis evolved into Homo erectus. The Homo erectus was found at Olduvai Gorge and also in Ethiopia. Excuse me, Mr. Opande. Mm -hmm. What does the word Homo erectus mean? Well, Alpha, Homo erectus means an upright man. The Homo erectus could walk upright. He made tools such as hand axes, spears, and arrowheads from stones. He was the first man to use fire. He was also able to communicate through speech. After Homo erectus, a more advanced man appeared. He was called Homo sapiens. Mr. Opande? Yes? What does the word Homo sapiens mean? Well, Homo sapiens means a thinking man. Homo sapiens carried out various economic activities such as hunting, gathering, and even fishing. From our discussion, we have seen that human beings lived many millions of years ago. We have already mentioned that, through evolution, human beings started making and using various tools, especially from stone. The period in history when human beings widely used stones as raw material to make tools and weapons is called the Stone Age period. The Stone Age period is divided into three stages. The first Stone Age period was the early Stone Age. It is called the Old Stone Age. Mr. Opande? Yes? How did human beings live during the early Stone Age period? Well, during the early Stone Age period, human beings lived a simple life in the forests. They hunted small animals, gathered fruits as well as vegetables, and dug up roots. They used stones to make other stone tools. The Homo habilis fall under the early Stone Age period. The tools they made included hand axes, hammers, spearheads, and arrowheads. The second Stone Age period was known as the Middle Stone Age. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Bosibori. What happened during the Middle Stone Age? Well, during the Middle Stone Age period, human beings lived in a wooded environment. The Middle Stone Age period was marked by great changes in the lifestyle of human beings. There were many developments, which included improved weapons, improved tools, made from wood and stones, better shelter and the invention of fire. Simple language for communication was also developed. The Homo erectus falls under the Middle Stone Age period. The Third Stone Age period is the Late Stone Age also known as the New Stone Age. The human beings who lived during the Late Stone Age period survived on hunting large animals, did some fishing, and lived in caves or rock shelters. They started to grow crops and keeping some animals. They also started to use iron tools. The Homo sapiens fall under the Late Stone Age period. And that is it about the evolution of human beings. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Mr. Opande, for all the information we have got from you about the evolution of human beings. You're very welcome. Now, which evolution of human beings lived about 2 million years ago? Alpha? The Homo habilis lived about 2 million years ago. Correct. Homo habilis means man with ability. Homo habilis was able to make things which he used for hunting. What did the Homo habilis evolve into, Bosibori? The Homo habilis evolved into Homo erectus. That is good, Bosibori. Homo erectus means an upright man. The Homo erectus could walk upright. He made more tools using stones. He was also the first man to use fire. What evolved after Homo erectus, Alpha? The evolution of Homo sapiens followed Homo erectus. Very good. Homo sapiens means a thinking man. Homo sapiens carried out various economic activities such as hunting, gathering, and fishing. We have also learned about Stone Age period. What is Stone Age period, Busibori? Stone Age period is the period in history when human beings widely use stones as raw material to make tools and weapons. Well done, Bosibori. 
The Stone Age period is divided into three stages. Tell us the first Stone Age period, Alpha. The early Stone Age period was the first Stone Age period. Very good, Alpha. During the early Stone Age period, human beings lived a simple life in the forests. They hunted small animals and gathered fruits and vegetables. Name the second Stone Age period, Bosibori. The second Stone Age period was the Middle Stone Age. Very good. During the Middle Stone Age period, there were many developments. This included improved weapons, improved tools made from wood and stones, better shelter and simple language for communication. Mention the Third Stone Age period, Alpha. The Third Stone Age period is the Late Stone Age period. Correct, Alpha. The Late Stone Age period is also known as New Stone Age. During the Late Stone Age period, human beings hunted large animals, did some fishing, and started growing crops as well as keeping animals. Let us now talk about prehistoric sites. Prehistoric sites are places where evidence of man's remains have been found. These places are called prehistoric because they come from a time before man's history was written down. The prehistoric sites are the only clues we have as to what life was like at that time. In Eastern Africa, there are many prehistoric sites. Excuse me, teacher. Our social studies teacher took us to Kariandusi, which is found in the Rift Valley province, and told us that it is one of the prehistoric sites found in Kenya. That is correct, Bosibori. Kariandusi is a prehistoric site found in Kenya. Teacher, when we were in Standard 6, our teacher took us to Rusinga Island. We learned that this is also a prehistoric site. That is correct, Alpha. Rusinga Island is a prehistoric site in Kenya. There are many other prehistoric sites in Eastern Africa, which include Hyrax Hills in Kenya, Olduvai Gorge, and Ngorongoro in Tanzania, as well as Sango Bay in Uganda. Please, class teacher, help your pupils to locate these and other prehistoric sites on the map of Eastern Africa after this lesson. In our lesson today, we have learned that evolution of early human beings is the gradual process by which early humans developed to become what we are today. Three theories have been used to explain the origin of human beings. These are mythical, creation, and evolution. The evolution of Homo habilis to the Homo erectus and to the Homo sapiens. Stone Age stages are the Early Stone Age, Middle Stone Age, and Late Stone Age. Prehistoric sites are places where evidence of man's remains have been found. There are many prehistoric sites in Eastern Africa, which include Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, Kariandusi in Kenya, and Sango Bay in Uganda. Thank you, Alpha and Bosibori, for that summary. And with that, we come to the end of our lesson for today. You have been